Hey everyone, Tox here from CritsHappen.com. Thanks for watching and welcome back. So as most of you know, The Force Awakens is coming out later this year, which is Star Wars Episode 7, and everyone is really excited about that. Recently, there was Force Friday, which is where pretty much every retailer in the world had something Star Wars. Whether it was Legos, whether it was action figures, whether it was toilet paper, whether it was bed linings, posters, there was just a multitude of things released all the same day. A lot of things that came out were around board games, um, some classics. There was uh, Monopoly, there was Risk, there was Chess, there was Loop and Chewy, a little bit of everything. Now, uh, for us, the most fun thing that we have had on the table is Star Wars Risk. We've played that multiple times, and unfortunately I get a little frustrated because it really has nothing to do with Risk whatsoever. And I really feel as though Risk kind of had a rebound when Risk Legacy came out. But Barring that to the side, what this game is really like is the Queen's Gambit. Now, if anyone doesn't like the prequels, which I don't, and if you hate Phantom Menace, which I do, you may look at Queen's Gambit and say, I don't ever want to play that game. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't, and you overlook it and have the opportunity to play it, you're making a mistake, because it is a great, great game. I really have enjoyed Queen's Gambit. Most of us don't own it though, because it was something that wasn't printed very much in abundance and it was something that went in the discount rack and uh, not until BGG and the power of the internet did people realize how good of a game it really was. So, what Risk did with Star Wars is it took elements of that and gave uh, one player playing the Empire, one player playing the Rebels, and each of them have a different goal to complete or win the game. And there's different tracks that they can take or different actions they can take in order to further that goal. There's battling on Endor and trying to take down the shields of the Death Star. There's the actual Death Star blowing ships out of space. There's tons of ships flying all around, including the Millennium Falcon and the Executor. There's a lightsaber battle between Luke and Darth Vader, which is really awesome. There's a lot going on, but even with all that, players can finish a game in about 30 minutes, which is one of the reasons it's been so fun for us. Probably right behind it, though, has been Loop and Chewy, which is a takeoff on Loop and Louie, uh, which really isn't much of a game, but it is still very fun. If you have family and you have young kids, they will absolutely love Loop and Chewy. If you have adults and you're having a drinking party, they will absolutely love Loop and Chewy as well, so I would highly recommend either of those, although always drink and game responsibly. So, for us, Star Wars Risk has been the most fun Star Wars property board game on our table recently. So my critical question of the day is, what is your favorite Star Wars based board game or Star Wars property based board game and why? Would love to hear, I know there's not a multitude of things here and I'm willing to open it up to even role playing games and things like that for people to comment on because obviously Fantasy Flight's role playing game for Star Wars is phenomenal, but would love to hear your thoughts. Let us know. Leave a comment below in the YouTube channel. Of course, you can chime in on Facebook and Twitter by searching Crits Happen or our homepage at CritsHappen.com. But until we see you next time, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for engaging. Keep rolling those dice, and may the Force be with you.